Tara Badwi here from Horse Racing Nation with week three of the weekly Outrun the Odds video segment where I talk about horses that I think have a good chance to outrun the odds in upcoming weekend races. And before we get started, I just want to say thank you for liking this video, subscribing to the Horse Racing Nation YouTube channel, and turning notifications on as well because we do have a lot of exciting content coming out not only this week, but also with the Breeders' Cup coming up too. So you're not going to want to miss out on that. Make sure that you are getting all of that content right to your YouTube feed by turning on those notifications. And for this week, there's obviously a big day going on at Belmont at the Big A. And I want to start off in race number six, which actually does kick off the pick six as well, with the number 10 horse, Courageous Ola, as my horse that I want to choose to outrun the odds. This one is 10 to 1 on the morning line, and he's certainly been outrunning his odds lately, especially in his last three starts where he has been 33 to 1, 34 to 1, and 16 to 1, respectively. So we'll start with his race three back, and that's where he was actually reined off the turf. He finished second that day to Cousin Andrew after setting the pace, and something I really like about this horse is that he can take pace pressure and just keep on going. Horses that try to stick to him early end up getting cooked and he just survives, which is exactly what happened in this spot. The same thing also happened last time out on September 4th on the turf, going five and a half furlongs, and he just totally scorched Golquist through fast fractions. And watching this race, you can see that Golquist backs up and finishes pretty far behind him. You can also see another contender that he's going to be facing once again that still couldn't close and pick him up for second last time. That's Sheriff Bianco, who's going to be half the price that Courageous Ola is. So if we look at his race two back as well, he broke from post nine, he sat close early, and he was the one making that first move after the pace setter. And he was also the only one that attended the early pace that was still around at the finish to round out the trifecta. And he was also bumped in the break in there too, looking at the head on. So this is a horse that I just see continuing to run winning races. I just can't not use this horse, especially at that price. I do feel confident that some of the other horses in here are going to take considerable money, like Frank's Art and some of the other ones from more New York-based connections that we're all a little bit more familiar with. But I think that this horse stands a really good chance to make some noise in this spot and hopefully get the win because he's been knocking on the door for quite some time. Staying at BAQ or Belmont at the Big A. We'll move on to the grade three Belmont turf sprint, which is going to be race nine on the card. And we're actually going to talk about the first horse that I ever tweeted about. And that's the number nine Fauci. And I've been banging my head against a wall with this horse for over a year, a year, because he also hasn't won in over a year. He last won June in 2021. However, he does hit the board, which is what I'm hopeful for in this spot at his 15 to one morning line. With six seconds and five thirds in his 16 career starts, he's definitely a reliable type to show up and just give you enough that you're kind of hooked and you keep hoping for some more potential with this horse. And that's exactly the trap that I have fallen into with him. I just keep betting him every single time. And so now I'm kind of off of the train of betting him to win, but he's always one that I want to make sure that I include in my exotics because he is such a consistent type. And at least you're getting the right price on him now in this spot. If we look at his last race in the lucky coin, he was rolling late as he often is to finish third behind Thin White Duke and Dancing Buck, who will both also be returning in here. And Thin White Duke is actually going to be my top pick for the race. But with Fauci, the price difference is why he's the one that I wanted to highlight. I don't know what the difference maker is going to be for him. I guess you could argue that maybe it's Flavian Pratt, but Pratt has ridden him before. And that was actually on July 4th, where he maybe should have won that day, if not for some significant traffic in that race. So I understood why a lot of people wanted to bet him coming out of that race. I've been wanting to bet him for much too long. So he was already on my radar and he just didn't seem to have it in him in the race following the one where he had significant trouble. So I guess that's probably why a lot of people were off him and he was let go at that 14 to one in his last start, but he just keeps kind of running the same race to me. And maybe at short prices, you can't make any more excuses for him, but I'll certainly keep spinning them at 15 to one because he certainly does at least pick up some checks. 
heading over to Churchill Downs for the final race that I want to talk about. That's going to be the grade three ACAC stakes carded as race number nine. And I'm so thankful that Speaker's Corner is back in this spot because he's going to take a lot of the wagering action. And I'm going to focus on the horse that actually finished ahead of him last time out in the number eight, Senor Buscador. This horse is 12 to 1 on the morning line. He's still very lightly raced compared to the others in this field. And he did start his career with a little bit of noise, winning his first two races and then jumping right on the Kentucky Derby Trail, where he was not successful in that Risen Star. After that, he was given a year plus layoff and he did return with a win at Lone Star Park. He was then very ambitiously spotted in the Grade 2 San Diego handicap. And while that was kind of a nothing effort, if you wrote him off entirely following that race, you missed out on the try in the grade two Pat O'Brien that paid $249.15 for a 50 cent wager because Speaker's Corner did not factor into that top three. At 21 to one, he was the one breaking from the far outside post, settling back early, allowing things to play out in front of him, and for Speaker's Corner to be that early pace setter in there. He's then going about five wide in the stretch and just keep on keeping on to get up for the show money. Now, maybe a mile is where he tops out with his two races beyond that distance being the only ones where he didn't hit the board. And this race is a mile. So that works out perfectly for him. He's also had two works at Churchill Downs. So he's had time to acclimate to the surface. And those have been some pretty good workouts. The last one being a bullet five furlongs in 58 and one, the best of 19 on September 21st. So I think Senor Bruscador is ready to fire in this spot. So the three horses that we're going to be focusing on for this week are the number 10, Courageous Ola in race six at Belmont at the Big A in race number nine, the nine, Fauci also at Belmont at the Big A and heading over to Churchill Downs for the last one, number eight, Senor Buscador in race nine.